Today is February 5th, 2024, and in episode 121 of ELT Cast, we'll demystify citations when writing an academic text. Hello and welcome to ELT Cast, an educational podcast making English language teaching and learning more transparent. My name is Benjamin Stewart at BenjaminLStewart.net. Before we get into today's topic, if you have any thoughts or experiences you would like to share, feel free to reach out to me at my X channel at B-N-L-E-E-Z. So today I want to spend some time talking about different types of citations, different types of references that you can consider when you're writing an academic text. So I'm going to pull up my screen here and open up my browser. And when you're looking for text, I'm going to use this example with the search term formative assessment to support writing. Now, granted, this is a general topic, but I want to show or share with you using Semantic Scholar one way that you can approach finding articles and when you're uh, trying to look for, let's say, a topic, you're trying to look for more articles that support your thesis statement. I want to give you uh, a way to do that. So here, what I'm doing is I'm using Zotero. Zotero here is a an app very much uh, like Mendeley. If you're familiar with Mendeley, it's a citation uh, tool. It's a way to to find PDF documents, edit those documents, categorize those whenever you're pulling together information to support an academic essay. So I've installed this here on my computer, and I've also added a an extension to the browser. Now I'm using Opera, but this the same holds for for Chrome if you're using Chrome or Firefox. So here I have I'm using Semantic Scholar, and I've used the term. I'm going to copy this, and I'm using the DuckDuckGo. Uh, bangs feature, which starts with an exclamation mark, and I'll type in S2 space, and then the term, the search term that I want, and this is going to take me directly to uh, Semantic Scholar, which I was already in, but uh, the idea here using Bangs is you can go and do search, uh, inc- uh, search queries directly within different websites. So here I have a list of results. Now, some of these results have a PDF attached to them. Others do not. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the range to include only within the last five years. So when you're looking for articles, try to find more recent articles, typically within the last five years. And most search engines or ways to find articles, you can filter through and limit the results to include within those articles within the last five years. Now, in this case, I'm going to only choose PDF documents. I'm going to only choose articles that I have access to the entire uh, article. And then from here, I'm going to read the abstract. And in most cases, that's all I'm going to read at this point. When I'm looking for articles and I don't have a lot to begin with, I'm trying to go through as many articles as possible to find potential articles later that might help support my my writing. So if you're working from an outline, you can build your outline through the process of reading. You might come up with a draft or an outline uh, without having read many articles, but I think it's a good idea also to consider reading first to get some ideas about what potential sections or topic sentences that you might later develop to support your thesis statement. So Here I have an article. I I find an article here that I can access and I can view the PDF, open it up, and I can save this using the uh, extension save to Zotero. And so you notice here that it's saving automatically now. It saved this. If I have different folders, I can certainly select the different folders, but if, if the default folder is where you want, then all you really need to do is select that. And now it, it's been saved. So here is the article in Zotero. 
involving primary school students. And uh, here's the document now that I just pulled in to this page. So again, I select here and it appears here in Zotero. Now what I'm noticing here that it provides a snapshot, but not the PDF. And uh, usually when you go through the step, it'll automatically save the PDF. So you can see other PDF files, other articles that I've saved in Zotero, and you can see that it, auto that it has the PDF, and this was brought in automatically using this add-on. Not sure in this case why that is, which is a little bit strange. But if not, you can always just download the article to your uh, computer and then bring it into Zotero. So I just want to share with you Zotero. Those of you who are using these types of software, it's very useful to um, use this whenever you're finding articles. You can go in and make annotations, highlight text, and then later bring those into your own writing. Okay, so, but the main point here is to try to find articles within the last five years. And a lot of times when you're doing your search results, you can oftentimes find ways to filter those queries to make sure that you're getting articles that are more recent. Now, the next thing to consider are what's called seminal articles or articles that have been well cited in other, in other articles. And those are also viable options. Those are other op those are options or articles that you can include if you find really important information, you know that it's a seminal work, you can also include that. These are going to be again articles that have been around and have been cited often by others. And a lot of times when you go in for example in Semantic Scholar, you can find information about how influential those citations are. And uh, there are different websites that you can search online if you're in doubt when you're looking for articles um, that are that could be considered seminal. Now, this is subjective, but do try to find articles that are more recent and that are seminal. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, the difference between primary and secondary sources. Now, the best types of articles that you can find or that you can use to support your ideas in your academic text are, are should come from primary research articles. That is articles that have some kind of literature or theoretical framework. Sometimes they call it an introduction, background information, but typically this is theoretical information that's coming at the beginning of an article and it typically is citing other people. You're basically uh, the author, uh, the author or authors are including information from other sources to say what others have said on the topic related to the thesis statement. A secondary source would be more like a book, um, maybe a, a dictionary, encyclopedia, and these are going to be forms of uh, citations or, or references that are going to be. Um, that you're going to use less often. In fact, you're not going to use at all a dictionary or encyclopedia. Uh, in, in my case, I typically limit books or book chapters to uh, just a few, maybe one or two for a particular assignment, and opting for more primary research articles or, uh, as being really the, the, the best source of information uh, to include in your references list. When we're citing, we have what's called primary source and a secondary source. Now, a primary source is any information coming from the original content, the original article. So if you have an, a, an article from Ellis, you're looking at the article and Ellis is stating something that is an original idea, then that's a primary source information. But if you're looking at an article from Ellis and they cite, let's say, Chomsky, and you want to use that idea from Chomsky, then that would be an example of a secondary source. It refers to content that's being first reported in another source. So the idea here is to try to use a, any secondary sources sparingly. That is, do your due diligence to try to avoid any secondary sources. So if you find, for example, information cited by Chomsky in Ellis and you only have the article, you only have access to um, 
the Ellis article, then you want to try to first see if you can find that article from Chomsky. You want to try to find that original source. Uh, sometimes you can't, especially if it's a famous author, uh, the, that person might say the same thing in other sources, in other articles. And so sometimes just looking for that idea from the same author in other sources, sometimes you'll get, you'll find what you're looking for. The third option is to try to find that same idea, perhaps stated by someone else. So if you have exhausted those three options, you've tried your best to try to find the original or primary source and you're not able to do so, and it's something that is very important to use, and perhaps you can use it. But again, overall, throughout your academic text, we want to limit the number of secondary sources um, because we want to try to find the primary source that's going to give you more valid uh, references. That's basically what I wanted to share with you, give you some suggestions on how to approach citations. We want to stick to mainly recent articles within the last five years. If you have any older articles, make sure that they are seminal. And we also want to try to stick to primary sources, primary research articles to make sure that we have our, the best sources available. And I've talked a little bit in class about parenthetical referencing. Try to stick to parenthetical referencing over narrative um, referencing, which we didn't really talk today, um, but I'll probably do a subsequent video on that more specifically. This is the ELT Cast, an educational podcast making English language teaching and learning more transparent. Thanks for listening.